so I can see it here. It's connecting there. Okay, and no, no uh, stuff from you guys either. We are live. Oh, hi, we're live. I forgot to flip the camera around. Hi. All right, I'll play some music here. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Office Hours pre-show. We're gonna get the show started in a few minutes here. Little Jenny Lewis. And we'll uh, wait for the audience to arrive. Kind of a sad song to start, but whatever. We know he got hot pup on the on deck. Checking reverb. Whoa, two. How is it sounding out there, everybody? We getting good levels? are not working today guys you know I am alive. oh baby mm -hmm. and you don't yeah you can't hear Doug and Vic Doug can I get a mic check hello check one two miking checking miking checking am I in there Vicky D can I get a good 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 morning am I very low a little low. A little low. What, what there button was do no I uh, snake pump up? For in love. Mm -mm. To be you sound all right. Bop, 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 bop. Like or Are you okay Myra? with it? Yeah, I can't hear myself and really too much. With the yeah, mold, I can't man, was it now I am I don't know why Vic should be low, but... Just so I don't have to get up super close to the mic. Let's build ourselves a fire. Let's build ourselves a fire. Maybe you just don't progr uh Maybe you just don't uh, project enough, Vic. I know. I'm still. Uh, All right, folks. We are about to get this show started. It is an exciting time of year. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Hello? What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Rig it again. Rig it again. We're a little early. Oh, it's nine o'clock now, baby. Nine o'clock on the West Coast. Oh, da ba da ba da ba boom ba ba. Hey, lady. Good morning, everybody. Here I am. I'm back. Ooh, 
baby. Uh, We've got the Holy Trinity in the house. Dougie Lucenhop. What's up, Doug? What's up, Tim? What's going on, Dave? You can hear me? I can hear you, baby, loud and clear. Vic, can you hear me loud and clear? I think I think Doug's laptop could be up there. My what? Your laptop. Could go up? Yeah, I, I think so. Well, All right. We're going to ride the levels here. Every step you take. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> All right, we've got a new mixer, um, a new system, a new system. Three new mixers. Uh, three new mixers. Just yes, we've around. got a whole new system. No one should care about this. This should not be a topic of conversation, but a lot of people are interested in the technicals of the show. Let's and get their hopes up, and then when, yeah. it, when it busts down, <laughs> their spirits will be shattered. So a couple of things we've done. We've gotten a new digital mixer, which gives us more channels, more uh, options for compression and limiting. Uh, we've given Doug and Vic their own individual mixers so that they can control the sound coming out of their computers. They can cue things up off air. Um, and much, much more. So that's sort of why we were off for a couple of weeks. We had Eric Natornicola call, uh, come in and help us set this up. And also I was busy traveling and I was in, uh, setting up, doing the Oscar special, of course, and all the rest. We'll get to all of it today on this edition of Office Hours. Office Hours. <laughs> Vic, I want to welcome you to the studio. Vic Berger. Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, let's ta- let's let's complete the puzzle and take a call and see if that works because that honestly has not been fully tested. It's going well, isn't it? So let's try a call. Is that loud Aristotle. enough? Is that a good level? That, yeah. Ricky could have been a little bit louder. Easy, Vic. Let me be the one to. It's going well, isn't it? No, that was great. No, it was great before. You're, Mommy. Vic, you're, 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 uh, whatever you got in your ears, those <laughs> earbuds are not, uh, the most not important telling people the whole the planet. story. Wait, how is this? That's too low. No, it's not. That's low, right? I can barely hear that. But let me try this one. Now. Okay. Everybody just cool out. It's perfect. There we go. Hello? So that, that's a good level. What about this? Hello? You just don't care. Is there a call? Hi, Tim. It, hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Oh, crap. Sure was damn. Can you hear, you? Just can you hear me? Care. Yes. D- stop playing fucking drops, <laughs> assholes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll say my yeah. Dad, uh, I, huh? Kay. All right. Let's get the call started. Who I, is this? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name's Andrew. I'm from Washington D.C. And I just want to say, my brother and I really like the the latest Oscar special. We just watched it last night. Thank you so much. Um, why did you wait so long? <laughs> um, why didn't you we watch it on the night it aired? Together. Huh? <laughs> we yeah, wanted to wait it. till we were together on spring break to watch it. So oh, that's nice. Did you um, laugh and hug each other? And, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody cover. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Uh, so just want to thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tim. It was a it was a an exciting night for us. We did it. We we go into that experience with a pretty fair idea of what we want to happen, and when it goes the way we want to happen, we're pretty happy about it. So it happened. Every year, it's a big. Yeah, it it's was- like I can't believe we pulled it off, and then we we have to go back. And we can't wait to do it again, but we have no idea what that's going to be yet. So, I liked um, it. That's it. Scary, that's do you go exciting. into it with like a loose idea? Yes. Of what will happen? Yes, of course. Yeah. Pretty scary, pretty exciting. Actually, more, I would say more than a loose idea. We have a, a, I think every uh, Vic, you were there for the I the was. live experience, I, and so as, yeah. as somebody who's a fan, getting to experience being there in the studio. It was. Uh, Tell me about I mean, your experiences honestly, there. One of the the uh, coolest experiences for me because like, uh, you brought me into this whole thing through on cinema. So years of watching from home as a fan, and I'm obviously still a fan. So Thank I got you. to sit in the uh, control booth. control booth and watch Eric Maternicola direct the whole show and and going flipping mm. through the the different shots, and it was the coolest thing. 
uh, I've ever. This experienced. show is loose. I like and, that. And I want to say, and I got to meet. Joe Estevez, who I've wanted to do. Uh, you wanted to do him? I wanted to do him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, I do, I'm a huge fan. So yeah. <laughs> so and not? he was a, a sweetheart, right? Yes, yeah, sweetest guy. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks for listening. Tim. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Joe Estevez. Yes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> let's take another call. <laughs> Whose was that, Doug? <laughs> yeah. Nice. That should play us several <laughs> times today, <laughs> don't you think? Every caller will get their yes. little sting. All right, next caller. Let's keep. Let's do a run of calls, and then maybe we'll get into a conversation about Sounds something. Good. Hello. Every caller will get their little sting. All right, next caller. Let's keep. Let's do a. Hello, run mute your stream, call. please. Who's coming in? Does this guy want a sting? I got a sting for you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? What's your name? Where are you calling from? <laughs> oh goodness gracious! It's Adam Cole. I'm calling from Dallas, Texas. Hey, what's going on, Alice? Alice? <laughs> hey, it's Alice from Dallas. What's going what up, on, man? dude? You got it. Did you get your on cinema tickets for on cinema live? Thank God I'm a yeah, I just bought. A, I just bought a thousand <laughs> tickets. Oh, that's impossible, man. What do you yeah, want? Turn, let me turn, turn, turn your stream down. down. What? Hey. Turn the, so turn I just saw the. Uh, yeah. Can you? Your stream hey, you is. Your finish. stream is. Uh, is down, feeding back on us, man. How's that? How's that? How are we doing? Yeah. Sounds good. What can I do for you today? This is some down south triple uh, dipping the, uh, action. The, the, the Oliver, Oliver Hart, the Stan and Laurel movie. I was wondering if you saw that and what your thoughts were. Uh, Laurel and Hardy, Stan and Ollie. Yes, of course. Stan and Ollie. Um, I, why am I talking this way? I saw it. I, as of course, as you know, as listeners of Office Hours know, I am close, close friends with the star of the movie, John C. Riley, one of my great friends. We're going to see Impressive. a movie today yeah. together in the afternoon. And I kept missing opportunities to see it throughout the year. Um, when it was kind of when he was out there promoting it, and there was a, uh, you know, special friend screenings and academy screenings and these kind of things. So, it's so interesting because <laughs> I never go out to the movies, but I felt so bad that I my friend was so proud of his work and of the movie. I said. I'm going to see it in that dang movie theater like a regular jerk. Like one of you screw jobs. <laughs> Meanwhile, Doug saw it in in a private experience. You saw I it. I like to take right, a Doug? special lady to a scene. <laughs> yeah, he invited us to the Virgil. Uh, what's it called? The Not the Virgil, the Vista. Right. The Vista Theater. And uh, yeah, it's excellent. It's excellent. It's excellent, okay? It was robbed this year when they're giving out statues to Bohemian Rhapsody, that pile of trash. Hey, what happened? And Green Bla Book, <laughs> whatever that shit is. I saw American <laughs> Clans. What's it called? American Clansmen? Yeah. Black Clansmen. Did you guys uh, see it? I saw that on a plane. I thought it was pretty good. I don't know if it was like the best movie of the year. No, but it... Uh I yeah, I was a little uh, upset with it. I think really watching it. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, well, during, while I was really? watching, do, do you uh, didn't we have our Oscar talk already? I this know, is very I ridiculous. But I, I watched it after the Oscar, so <clears throat> anybody care? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> I don't think we need to start we don't getting need to into rehash that. that. You know, but listen, if you haven't seen Stan and Ollie, it's a beautiful movie about friendship and about comedy and about. Um, living a life in comedy or living a life in the performing arts and the struggles uh, that that uh, represents that can that that can happen when you're when you start getting old you start wondering what what your purpose is and the makeup and the performances from both John and Steve Coogan were I thought top notch and by the way Steve Coogan <laughs> but <laughs> I think Steve Coogan has a new series of Alan Partridge out, which I found through, I got a link uh, privately, but it's, you can find it on YouTube for our American friends here because it's only airing in the British Isles. Which one is Alan? Was it the redhead? What? 
the partridge. Which partridge family? My were? own Miamon. Uh-huh. <laughs> Miamon. Uh. All right. Well, I, I have one more thing too. You guys were just talking about Joe Estevez. Um. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll try, try and keep it short. Uh, I was a child actor, uh, and uh, I was. Uh, were you molested by Michael Jackson? Uh, numerous, <laughs> numerous times. Um, <laughs> numerous times. No, uh, but I, I was, uh, there's a guy named Donald G. Nelson. He's a B-movie director. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him. Donald G. Nelson. No, I've never heard of Donald G. Nelson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. kind of considered Ed Wood of the, uh, of the VHS era. Anyway, uh, I was supposed to be in a movie with him or, uh, that he directed called Billy Frankenstein, and I auditioned with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Don Nelson's like nine-year-old daughter wrote the script, uh, and they and they were telling us it was going to be on HBO. I realized later it was all a scam. But if you guys get a chance, you should look up this guy. Uh, he wrote a movie called Demon Lover. Uh, no, 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 Michael. Dro- I forgot to tell you, no Michael drops today. Okay, it's too oh. it's too triggering for me. Oh, Stop yeah, come on. Copy that. Um, yeah, but uh, he, he financed that his first movie with uh, the lawsuit that his friend got from intentionally cutting off his fingers in a factory uh, in Michigan. Anyway, you should look right. him up. Oh, a look. Lot of- What's his name again? Donald J. Nelson? Donald J. Trump? What's his name? Don- <laughs> Donald G. Nelson. Donald um, G. Nelson. Yeah, I forget his. He had a big one. Uh, <laughs> Someone on, on Phil Braun on the board says Donald G. Nelson sounds like a Donald Trump alias. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it. That could be the situation. Uh, who is this, sir? Uh, this is Donald G. Uh, G. N- Nelson. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking up Donald yeah. G. Nelson. <laughs> okay, thanks Probably. for calling. Let's take another call. Let's find to get our get our groove on. <laughs> Good bye. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on the show. Um, it's been a couple weeks, and it's good to be back. Uh, I don't. I was too too um, hello busy to put together any kind of content for the show today. So I hope we get in. You know, the first several minutes of the show is generally kind of warming up, getting to know each other one more time. No, don't get into that yet. I like when you get into that, but you want me to get into that now? You want me to get into that now? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Stop. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Hey, guy. <laughs> hey, bud. Hello. It's Joe. Hello. It's Joe in Albuquerque, my boys. Oh man, these longtime callers are starting to get a little dry. Well, do you have yeah. something for me today? You guys sound you guys sound a little off on the phone. I don't know what's up with that, but uh, anyway. How does the show? Like, how, how off? What how do you mean the, off? How does the show sound? Just on my phone. On the on the show it sounds fine, but it's just on my phone. I think. Um, anyway, hey, I've been off, listening to like Craig. Like a clown. What? You've been listening to what? Been what? listening to Greg's uh, prank calls on YouTube. Greg Turkington's prank calls uh-huh. that he used to do. Oh yeah, they're great. They're really funny. Um, has he ever called into your show? No, but I did talk to him about calling in or coming in as a guest, and I think he's a, he's open to it. You know, he doesn't like to necessarily be out of character. Um, uh, I you know, see. Uh, when he's well, he, pre- could, he could be in he could be in a character. Right? I want him to That'd come be- on because he is like the expert on the Michael Jackson scene. Like he's done, like the Michael Jackson child molester thing. He is like he's done all the quote unquote research into this shit. He knows it all. And I would love to because I don't know anything, but I trust my friends. And I trust. But, uh, you know, he could probably talk for an hour about it. Um, but maybe I'll have him in for that. I, but that seems like a very depressing show. He's got the documents. He's got them. <laughs> um, so if you want to find Neil Hamburger, it'll be Neil Hamburger prank calls. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, those are those are really good. Um, he should come in and talk about music. He's, uh, he's also an expert on all yeah, kinds of music. He knows so much. He's a, a font of knowledge. I can hear a phone ringing. So what? <laughs> okay, thanks for calling <laughs> in. Now, hold what on, else can you hear? How did you hear? Hey, Vic, that? I got a question for Vic. Question Vic, for Vic. Hey, what's Vic, up, you've man? Been te- you've, been, you've been teasing some sort of 
possible job opportunity is. Can you tell us? <laughs> for yeah, for, for a long for time, many years. For, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, can we talk about that at all? I mean, I don't. I would advise yeah, you not, not to. to. Okay. Uh, hopefully, something's coming up so I can make rent. Um, and uh, just stay tuned. Uh, yeah, and support yeah. Vic's and f- support Vic and Doug's Patreon. Uh, I would yeah, say yeah. you could you could get involved in that scenario right now. Can you always want to plug those real quick while we're having the audience rapt attention? Yeah, if you uh, if you like our stuff, uh, help us out, and so we can keep doing more. I guess. Uh, Where is the Patreon? Do I, I don't know if I want to. You should think Doug, about doing. Is <laughs> <laughs> there we go. What uh, is the Patreon? I forget. Patreon.com you slash forget. Doug Pound. If you want to go to mine, <laughs> Patreon.com <laughs> slash Doug Pound. You will get exclusive access to unreleased media. Um, <laughs> can you guys... <laughs> and discounts. Can I, I got, what is it, Vic? Vic? And then mine, yeah, Vic can you Berger. guys debunk something for me? Can I what? Can you debunk something for me? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Re- related to Vic's videos, because I love Vic's videos of that hypnosis guy, that street oh, yeah. hypnotizer. Oh, it's Vic Burger. It's just Patreon. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Vic Burger. That's Joey. Right. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be some, sorry, for, hypnosis, for that, the, there'll be some exclusive stuff, like stuff that I never put out, stuff I wasn't allowed to put out at Super Deluxe. Um, you'll get stuff first before other people. What are you raking in a month right now? I that? think it hit like a uh, 1K. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm honored and flattered by I'm it. doing like 1H. 100. <laughs> 1H. <One H. laughs> you cutting edge info junk. <laughs> but okay, guess, um, but you'll get something in the mail from me at some point, some art-related thing. I'm gonna, you know, so you're gonna bury yourself that. in postage. Fees. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's running a deficit. Those are gonna be one k in postage. Um, Vic is sending out bowling post- balls, <laughs> free autographed bowling balls. <laughs> it's a bowling. It's a clear bowling ball with your head inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cost you eighty dollars a shipment. <laughs> Um, CD-ROMs, hard drives, floppy disks. <laughs> what would you like us to debunk, sir? And that's a good angle for the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, de- debunk it. And you can call in and we will debunk Let's it. De- we'll debunk anything. <laughs> well, Find well a I called in uh, a couple shows ago. I called in about the uh, 440A thing and you guys debunked that. So I was wondering <laughs> you if you could uh, I wonder if you could debunk hypnosis for me. Um, I'm not prepared. Or is to, it real? I'm not prepared to do that. I think that there might be some uh, actual <clears throat> actual stuff going on with that, but I don't, really don't know. I, Doug I, I or Vic? In I believe in it. I um, In college, I went to a big uh, thing in an auditorium. His hypnosis came in, and he, uh, he, he hypnotized everybody. I was not buying it. And then, and then everyone's under for like you know, 50 minutes. And then Next thing you know, your pants are missing. And then, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, he's like, <laughs> your left leg will lift. And it happened. And I was like freaked out. But then nothing else happened, though. It happened. Your leg went up. Yeah, I didn't control it. Yeah, it was suggested to me. Meanwhile, there's a guy up in the rafters <laughs> with fishing wire tying on. <laughs> 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 Hurry up. Yeah. Marionette. But, uh, but, <laughs> but the hypnosis dude that you're talking about, I think the... Uh, that the, guy we were yeah, watching that, that, that one time? Who, uh, he makes he men makes, like he makes men orgasm on like, the street. Yeah. Those I'm I'm fairly certain those are real. They're not they're not like actors. Those are real people. There he also gets it's the ethical lines of that are uh, oh there we go. I they, could get closer. Those are just suggestible people who are yeah, and they're who, drunk too. A lot of those guys. It's like <laughs> middle of the night, like on a boardwalk. <laughs> okay, so there's so we're not debunking. Um, yeah. We're not debunking hypnosis. Right. I apologize. Sorry. It's, no, it's, it's true. true. We're, it's, it's true. He's saying um, Vic's stance is that that was real. Those videos are real mm-hmm. to the extent that they can be real. Most, yeah, most. Right. I would say there's an 82 percent chance no. they're they're legit. I would say maybe there's some that are fake. You know, uh, I don't want to do- bring this down too much, but we were off last week or for the past couple weeks, and <clears throat> I, I wanted to do a proper tribute to our friend uh, Brody Stevens, no. who we lost, and. Uh, Doug, I know you were close with him, and uh, you know we—he was obviously one of our favorite comedians, and a, a totally unique and uh, special, if not complicated, person. But his uh, his whole sensibility, I think, influenced much a lot of uh, our our day to day discourse. 
our way we speak, like the way I'm speaking right now. Uh, you got it. There yep. you go. I knew. I was hoping you'd have some Brody drops. I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, that. it fucks you up. I can't do Brody drops. No, that's fucked up. Wait, who would, who did that? Yes. I think that was a call. The guy just said it. He oh, said the it. guy just, said it. That's a good it imitation. Live. Yeah. That's me. Well, I mean, I think, I'll be happy to verbally do verbal drops. I thought it would be respectful to do it. Mm, no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's too. That's too weird. <laughs> I mean. Okay. His his catchphrases are the best though. They positive. Are, they really positive are. energy. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna. It's kind of like when he died. It was like the mayor of comedy died. If you do comedy around L.A. Yes. And he was at all the shows. He did your show a number of times. It was always exciting and um, unex you never knew what you're going to yeah, get. Yeah, like when he performed, it wasn't just like another stand up. It, it was, was a happening. Like, it was a happening. It was an event that right. everyone n needed to stop what they were doing. And well, I shared this story on Twitter, but I'll share it here because hopefully nobody looks at my Twitter because it's a big waste. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone looks at that. <laughs> but I remember my big memory of Brody was when we were in L Dublin. Uh, this is like 2011, I think. Uh, we were at, in Dublin for the comedy, the Vodafone Comedy Festival in Dublin, Ireland. And Eric and I were out there. You were out there, Doug, or I, not. You were not. No, but I have a video oh, to play after your story. Okay. Okay. You were not there. I was. I met you in London after the double. Oh, okay. Thing. Oh, and oh, okay. I know. I think I know where you're going with that. But anyways, I was there. Eric was there. The Garfunkel and Oates were there. Um, Nick Thune was there. Tig Notaro was there. Notaro. Tig Notaro. <laughs> it's Notaro. <laughs> <laughs> and Brody was there. And some of them I knew. Some of them I didn't know that well. But we had such a good time together and um brody was on fire that weekend he was f so excited to be traveling and being in ireland uh we went to the um to the jameson factory so like as a tourist kind of thing to do eric i and him and made some videos and then he uh, we, we perf he performed several times that weekend um at various parts of the festival and he was, I remember, or Clark uh, Ranking rem reminded me of this, that we, he was very excited, but like se had a little self-doubt about it, was like, you know, needed us to like psych him up and like, you know, get him, get him excited for the first couple of shows. And then he got over that. And we, we, the, the main show he did at that festival was in a big 500 seat tent of some kind, you know, like a big outdoor sort of, covered tent festival kind of environment and we all went over to watch to watch his set we got there a little early and we're standing in the back of this big 500 seat tent and there's a comedian on an Irish bloke who's going on and doing kind of a you know more of a traditional stand-up routine very kind of localized humor and as he's talking, we start hearing this tambourine. <laughs> just, just sort of reverberating through this whole <laughs> space, you know? And it takes us about 10, 30 seconds to figure out that Brody is backstage behind the comedian. And he's, that's part of his act. He comes out with a tambourine. He comes out with drums and, and just sort of like gets the crowd going. And sorry about that ringing. That's, we got to turn that phone off. And... Um, yeah, you could try to work on that, Vic. And anyways, we realize that, that Brody's backstage warm, ramp, amping himself up to get, to get the show going, but the whole room could hear this tambourine going, and the comedian on stage could, had to like, you know, say, what's going on backstage? What is this? And, uh, and we were crying, laughing, crying, laughing. And then he came out and did his set, and it was, you have to remember, he's in Ireland, it, in Dublin, talking to an Irish audience, and he's talking about, about Sherman Oaks, about he's Reseda talking about Reseda, and, and his high school, <laughs> and the, the various, various like, uh, Balboa, Balboa Road, and, you know, like, like very, Ralph, I shop at Ralph's, you know, like, very specific, very specific. But, you know, I think he w won them over just with his sheer force and energy. Um, just cadence alone. Enjoy He's just, it. Just cadence. Just anything he says Enjoy was, it. just made it funny. And it's very sad that, that what happened to him. It's very, um, I think it's very unsettling and confusing because, you know, with him, I always felt that he was obviously, 
had he was very open and and uh, talked about his struggles with mental illness and depression and these these issues that uh, so many people out there deal with. And you but you also felt I don't know I didn't I hadn't <coughs> talked to him for a while I had, hadn't been that close to him recently but. Um, I always, if, if, if you had asked me the week before he um, committed suicide, if you asked me if that was a possibility or what, you know, I don't know why you would. It would seem like a weird conversation to get into. But I would think, no, he's too, like, he's too wrapped up in his own nuttiness to do something like that. You know what I mean? Um, like, it just seemed, uh, but, but well, the, I, but I the medication is so yeah. tricky. And, I mean, we don't, we, I don't want to speculate what, you know, the reasons, because who knows, but. You know. I blame the medicine. You blame the medicine. Um, and that could very well be. But Can I play this video? That, um, yes. When you guys were in Dublin, um, Eric... F so, okay, it's a, it's a group of, like, teenage Irish boys. And nice! Eric, and Eric <laughs> filmed it. It's 20, 20 seconds long. And then a surprise happens. You kind of have to see it. Okay, that's great content okay, for a show. <laughs> Hey guys, I, I'm at work, so I gotta go, but I'm really sorry about you. For Shut the fuck I, I, up. I'm playing my video. Just hang up. Like, we forgot you were on the AR anyway. We don't care if you're going back to work. <laughs> okay. All the best. Just let me play this one part. It's kind of funny. There's a big group of Irish teens, and then Brody pops up. DJ Duck Pound in the mix. Big fish in Dublin. Just a couple more. Come to Dublin. Come to Dublin. Come to <laughs> Just a couple more. What did that even that mean? That was one of it. Well, that's that's my favorite <laughs> phrase of his that I would say to him. Yeah. He would always go, a couple more. And I'm like, a couple more. So whenever he would do my shows, I would request a couple more. Right. And he would do a couple more, which means like a half an hour of a extra of a set. A couple more. A couple more. Well, I'll let me share this story, which is, I, I mean, I, listen, to move beyond the Brody... Uh, this is sort of a transition out of that, but I don't know if I told you guys about this. We, so on the, and I don't want to tell too many names here for, out of respect or whatever, dignity. Um, on Friday, when he, uh, when we got the news about Brody, I um, f talked to a close friend of his who was having a little, little impromptu get together that night, okay? We can sort of, Imagine who that might be. And I had a, it was a bit of a drive. It's across town to get there. So I had another friend who lived near me, and I, I'll, I'll also keep this person anonymous. I will say that this, we'll call this person um, Jim. Okay? So. What are you? Individu Sorry, individual one. <laughs> we'll say Jim. Okay, okay. So Jim and his wife, I said, uh, oh, he's hey, married. I can put the pieces together. I'm going over. I'm going over to let's say Clam's house. Okay. <laughs> I'm going over to Clam's house because he's having people over about Brody. And do uh, you want to come with? I'll drive, and we'll head over there. So we uh, we pick up Jim and his wife, and we head over to Venice area, that part of uh, L.A. It's a good 40 minutes away. It's not the most ex m most exciting opportunity for me to drive over there on a Friday night. But I want to pay my respects and be around some people. And, um, so we're driving, and we're on the 101, and we're at the place of the 101 where it, it connects to the 110, going, through da going to downtown. And out of, it's dark out. Out of nowhere, Jim and I see a... What at first looks like a giant package, or I think the first instinct was some giant piece of uh, insulation or something, come rolling onto the freeway. Within a second, we all identify it is a human being. It is a body. No. And a body has just been struck by a car. The car in front of the body has stopped and that body is dead. Okay? So we pull over immediately. Jim runs out of the car, calls 911, and um, runs across the, the lanes of traffic. The, the body is now in the middle of the street, middle of the highway. 
and um, stands, and another guy comes out. I stand on the on the what's it called? The side of the road. The, the, uh, the uh, shoulder. The shoulder. Um, and try to slow traffic down so nobody else gets hit. And um, you know, we call. Uh, my friend calls nine one one. Cops arrive. My friend Jim um, is went into full um, adrenaline like hero mode. You know, wasn't intimidated by the situation. Ran into it. I was. I stood back and said, "This looks like he's taking the lead on this. I'm going to hang back because you don't need to just have a crowd of people over there." He um, took the guy's pulse, which I could not. I don't. I don't know how I would do that. You know, and just and was very cl you know clear he was gone. And we waited for the cops to arrive, and uh, yeah, within uh, 15 minutes they arrived. We gave a short statement. There was nothing to say, really, by anybody. There, it would just happen. It, he was dead, and um, you know, it was not a hit and run. The car we had found out the car had stopped off the highway, and called it in. Um, it was probably a homeless guy, or or he's probably you know drunk or something. Did you get a look at like what you know? Did he look homeless? Did he look? Yeah. Well, like according to my friend Jim, he looked home. <coughs> he looked a little rough, or whatever. Um, and you know, so so we come back. He comes back to the car, and we have this choice to make. Like, well, first of all, we're all in shock. You know, the feeling of just full, you know, sick to your stomach. Oh my fucking! I can't believe I just saw that. I never want to see that again. Every time you close your eyes, you see this. Um, and we said, well, what do you want to do? Like, do you want to go home? Do you want to get a, I wanted to get a drink. Um, you know, you have the shaky hands going on. And, uh, but we said, let's just go to this, uh, let's go to this hang, let's go to this house, but let's just put it aside and not bring that into the room. You know what I mean? So that's what we did. And we, uh, we it was just the most surreal night because we, the four of us had just kind of had that stand by me yeah. experience, you know, <laughs> of seeing a dead body. And uh, by the end of the night, I think that people had thinned out and we were with the, the core of people of that house and everything. And we, we just, we told every, them what happened. And, uh, but I'll tell you, we had a, f we had a, uh, we had a few whiskeys that night for various reasons. And, uh, it was a shaking, uh, and uh, disturbing experience. I hope that no one has to ever see that. Any thoughts guys? Or questions? <laughs> wow. Who, who's individual dart. one? <laughs> <laughs> Did in, individual one know about the finance before the election? No, um. no we can move on. I yeah, just wanted to share that story. You know story. what? Recently I saw, I saw the same thing with a dog. And I oh, immediately oh, when I no. saw the dog tumbling, I was like, I that wish I didn't see it. That. I didn't want to see that. Has that changed how you see day to day like with like your, your kids and stuff like that? Like... How, like do you f feel like you need to be doing more positive things or, or, you know, I don't know. Like, how has it, how has that changed you um, currently? Or is it just, have you forgotten I, about it? You know what? Well, my friend was a bit more disturbed by it. And the next day we, we, we were talking a bit and I was talking to some people about it. And, you know, it fades, that feeling fades and goes in the background. I think the, the learning moment of it maybe is for my friend who got really qu involved right away, and the fact that we pulled over and stayed with him, and we, we did all the right things, you know, I think that that um, that you should try to do in, in society. Um, we were, and we were moved and upset by it. And I think that's, m that's a better than, that would be, that's more affirming and more sort of uh, appropriate, or it makes me feel better about things than if like, I checked in with myself a week later and, and said, yeah, I saw this fucking guy get hit. Who fucking cares? Fucking homeless mm. guy getting in the way, you know, or that we didn't stop or, um, or we don't feel traumatized by it. So I feel like traumatic. I, I, I've had a few traumatic experiences, um, and I find them to be good moments to check in with th that, you're, th that you're alive and that you're mm. in, in the world and you're, you can be affected by the world. <laughs> So th from that perspective, I think it's good. Um, I'm happy that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good for you. It's a blessing. <laughs> Tim, that day when we all found out Brody died, 
a bunch of us went to the bar that used to be the Big Fish, where yeah. we all used to do comedy, where I had my show 10 years ago. And, like, after the news... I'm sorry I couldn't make that, by yeah. the way. Oh, that's fine. I mean, after the news broke, it kind of felt like comedy itself died, you know? Um, but it was great to just hang out with all these people I haven't seen in a while. And it kind of reconnects... We kind of reconnected a bunch of... Well, people I haven't seen. We in a had while. the similar thing on the west side, and the first, the ninety percent of that night were were jokes and laughs and stories, um, and and because that's what we do, that's how we process things. And uh, I had a lot of laughs that night, and you have to you have to laugh. I laughed harder than I've ever laughed that night. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the way he would have wanted it. All right, let's take another call and see if we could change the couple mood. more, couple more, couple more. Maybe I will do some Brody jobs. Hey, Hi, hello, Tim. Oh! Hey, how's it going? Where are you calling from? I'm in Nevada right now. Oh, we have 666 people watching on YouTube Live right now. The oh. devil's listening. That's uh, pretty creepy. What do you want to talk about, Nevada boy? Uh, Eric Wareheim. <laughs> I got him, I got him. Oh! You little desert rat. You little desert rat. You don't know how to work. You little loser. <laughs> Nevada. <laughs> what a piece of shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Who's next? Who's next? Right now, the devil's listening. Hello? What do you want to talk about, Nevada boy? Hey! Hey! Turn, Turn off your, your stream, key. queen. <laughs> Why on? Yeah, we're live, baby. How's it going, Tim? Who are you? What's uh, your name? Where are you calling from? Sebastian, calling from uh, L.A. Ration? Sebastian. Sebastian. Hey, Sebastian. Is this? A, uh, do I know you? I think so. Oh, we work together. Sebastian, is this you? Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. So, let me let me set you up a little bit. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah. You're so quiet. I'll Sebastian <laughs> is a a camera assistant um, on a lot of the shoots we do. He has a fun little thing he does where he wears a different Tim and Eric shirt every day on set. Wow. So if we're shooting for a couple weeks, it's a new merch shirt from him. He must have Tim and Eric, Decker, on some, whatever it is. He's wearing it to set. And, and he's always a good, it's always a nice... Uh, does it compliment his brown nose? Well, <laughs> he gets nothing out of it. He's just a fan, and it makes me feel good to have somebody that appreciates our work on set work, and it's not just some some guy coming in, punching the clock, you know. Hey, it could be anything. I could be shooting Steve Harvey <laughs> show right now. Man. So, Sebastian, how's it going for you? What's happening? What's the latest? What do you have to say? What do What's you want to know? Um, I just want to say thanks for that Brody tribute. Um, I was at the comedy store just last night, for a little Brody show, and Really appreciate, you know. Did you go word. to that, Doug? No, I hmm? couldn't make it last night. And I was out of town for the other one. Or the the one that's going to be on this Sunday. There's another one. Oh, nice. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. Well, we don't, we're not that close with him, so. <laughs> um, What's going on here? Yeah. I, one of my big things that I was just calling about, though, is, is the show that we worked on. God, that was almost nine months ago. The uh, Moonbase. Moon base. Yeah. Um, I wish I had news for you. This has been a real struggle, um, and it's it has a lot to do with the changing media landscape of all these mergers and all these uh, acquisitions and companies in flux. I'm hoping to have news in the next couple of weeks uh, to share. It, you know, it all I can we're going to have a, a screening that you'll be invited to. I think um, in uh, in a few weeks, so stay on the lookout for that. Um, but it's, have mercy. it's very exciting. It's very good, I think, and I can't wait for people to see it. But we just have to be patient, and it's a, it's been a very frustrating experience for all of us. Okay, what was this? Uh, your uh, camera assistant? Like, what is uh, what was your job? I'm sorry, I missed that. He's a camera assistant. Cam what is that? What is a camera assistant? Well, a camera on a movie mm -hmm. set or a TV show is a complicated machine. So oh. there's things that have he to gets be coffee for the camera. You get uh, <laughs> sets up meetings. You get new lenses. You, you lenses. what do you do, Sebastian? You you can answer that question better than me. Yeah, uh, pretty much set up the camera, change lenses. Um, the biggest thing I do is that during the actual 
shooting, I'm pulling focus the whole time. So anything that's in focus that you see, it's me pulling the focus. So can't well, they just throw it on autofocus? Yeah. What? <laughs> hey Vic, before you start, you know, proud, <laughs> proudly walking around demanding a TV show, maybe you should right, learn I a little, little bit about how, how things are made. How it operates. <laughs> what does pulling focus mean? Oh, that's what you're just. Right in that just ring, you're you're racket. you're focusing. But so so some other dude, so there's a camera dude with a, with a camera, and then you're the different guy on, of the, him, on like, that ring. When uh, when there's motion, there's an actor walking. You have to pull focus. Of course. Uh, okay. Okay. I got it. All right, Sebastian. Thanks for calling in. Good to hear from you. I hope we get to work together <laughs> soon. Wow. Are you trying to Are you trying to create a, a focus pull with the camera, Doug? Bye bye. <laughs> thanks, Sebastian. I pull Ciao. audio. And now my bitter hands. Um, <laughs> hold on. I want to call somebody now. I want to try to call <clears throat> somebody now. Um, sorry, this is going to take a second to figure out. But can I, Aristotle, can I s send you this number? Can I send you this number? All right, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to email you a number because. <laughs> hold on a sec. <laughs> Keep going, guys. You're oh really. Yeah. All right. I've emailed you a phone number. I would like to try to, for you to get him on the call, get him on the line. Dick Clark was discovered by me. I discovered Dick Clark. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've I mean, I'm like that. a pretty yeah, simple guy. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, we're going to try to get Ethan Klein on the line. Doug, what was that? H3H3 H3 podcast. Simple guy? I don't know who that is. Um, if, if you're identify. listening, you know who that is. A lot of you guys I mean, I'm like a pretty are always asking guy. to have him on the, on the call. <laughs> and we're going to talk. I think we're going to talk about Michael Jackson for a bit and maybe whatever else. But um, I but hope this someone works. Someone told me yesterday. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> yesterday. I'm hoping this works because... Oh, I can't call him. Can I call him with the... F can you try doing it through Google Voice? Okay, stand by. Uh, we're going to try to get Ethan on the line through a different... Me Stop with this! <laughs> <laughs> my soul, my soul, my soul, my pants. This is a... This is a <laughs> now, usually I don't Sorry. do this, but... Uh, the you do. This is a monologue. This is a monologue called My Soddy Soddy Pants. I'm all the thing you grill. My Soddy Soddy Pants. My Soddy Soddy Pants. I had eggs for breakfast. I went to move some gas. But out of my ring came. Out of my ring came a brown, a brown suit. Is that, is it, is that, are we calling Hello. Hello. Did it work? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello, darling. All right, shut up! <laughs> I really enjoyed the symphony of uh, Michael Jackson. I was, <laughs> I know, I, I thought it was a little, uh, I was not, I, I was going to tell Doug not to, because he's banished from my show. That's, that's Vic I, on the oh, no. Jackson. Well, all right. Whoever was doing it, I feel like I can't hear that creeps, this, his sounds, but. That's um, kind of a good point. How are you, uh, Ethan? Nice to talk to you. Well, first of all, hello, uh, Doug and Vic and Tim. It's Love lovely. all three of you. God, God bless y'all. Yes. Um, How are you? Great are you to be um, here. What a, did you have a baby or no? I don't know. So my wife is due in oh, June. In June. 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 Six. I'm so that is super exciting, pregnant. man. Yes, she's. Yeah, it is. I'm super happy. I'm super excited. She's super pregnant. Is she? Um, she's feel, how's she feeling? She big. She's actually feeling good. She's she's a radiant uh, she's a radiantly beautiful pregnant woman. 
Are you um, continuing to work through it? Are you doing the sh- the podcast? And what what are you what are you up to yeah. these days? Well, well, Tim, just a whole lot of the same. Yeah, we've got the podcast. We've got the videos. My wife has a clothing company. Oh. We are doing it all. Do you do um Do you do live stuff? Do you go out on the road and see your fans and and and, and do that? You know, you haven't done that. We had one live show. We did one live show in L.A. and it was super fun. Mm-hmm. It was really great. You got to get on the it road. Was just, it was a lot of. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be. It was a lot baby. of work. Yeah. And it was it was a little just intimidating to take on like a whole tour. I got I saw a show and I can't again. I mean, I could be t- scorching the earth with my commentary on the, on what I see out there in the world. I could be burning bridges left and right. But I try to I try to remain respectful. But I saw a show recently, a big show, with a comedian, and I was so disheartened by it because when I go out on tour, and you know maybe not so much with my single man stand up in those small clubs, but when I go on tour with Eric or we do this on cinema live show, an incredible amount of work and um, production goes into the show. We really take it seriously yeah. uh, and put a lot of our time into it and then I go see this guy and it was the laziest I put a lot of work into that show <laughs> not you I want to have a baby you know why it was new there were people at the show hello <laughs> um, Ooh, no I, I, and it was just like a lazy um, sloppy <laughs> poorly put together show and it had uh, and then it just kind of devolved into a Q&A. And it was was like, loose. I like that. Jeez, man. <laughs> what am Q&A? I doing? What yeah, and hell? people were fucking dying and loving it. So Who maybe was it? Individual too? Yes, it was oh, Individual no. 4. So wait, are we talking about a stand-up no, comedian? No, no, we're not. A one-man show? We're not doing any <laughs> questions about it that may reveal who but, I saw. Well, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to understand the, uh, the scenario. Q&A. I'm not trying to dig the yeah. names. Tim, if I'm people liked it. I'm not talking about it anymore. If people liked it, though. That's fine. Okay. Then it's fine. Then the crowd, then the job is do- well Makes, done. I agree. That's right. So but that makes you mad though when you see a movie mo- that people like and you're so like, you were, this sucks. but most people just want to be in the same. Man in a sea of yeah, joy. I was just I had this. You know that's in Annie Hall that smile that he has on his face when he's <laughs> watching that comedian yeah. who's t- who's doing his routine. Yeah. It's a famous. It's one of my favorite m- moments in movies. But he's got this smile of just like, uh huh. Like I can't <laughs> wait for this to be over. He's cute. It's that <laughs> smile. Um, and but you're right. <laughs> you're right, Doug. It it is. It's my own bitterness. It's my own. But um, and I we love putting on our shows, you know. And that's just the, that's just yeah. our part. But a lot of people just want to be in the same room with these people. They don't really care about what the content yeah, is, what the I mean, ideas that's, are. That's true of that's true of big, big, big like rock stars and rap stars. If you go to their show, they're selling out stadiums, but mm-hmm. they're not even singing. I know. I saw Kanye West for some Adult Swim party uh, years ago, and it was trash. It was just this, like, it was karaoke night with the guy. Uh, it was just mm. backing track and him singing along to it. But anyways, let's transition yeah. to, because I, I asked you to call in, because last I'll set this up with last <laughs> night, I finished watching the Michael Jackson documentary on HBO. Yeah. And I don't know what yep. what I thought I was doing, but I went on Twitter and sort of, Saw somebody retweeted something. Oh, it was that the some uh, Christian Southern Christian Center uh, is suing HBO, f- blocking them from airing it. And then I was like, oh, there's like a movement of people that think he's innocent and are trying to defame this documentary and he trying is. to stop. <laughs> and, I stand with Michael. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and then I just went into this deep dark hole of people. Um, you know, seeing these people that are responding to the documentary, some people that haven't seen it, chiming in, saying that, you know, I haven't seen it, but I don't, I can't, there's no way I would believe it, you know, like that kind of talk. And then, yeah. so yeah. then you wrote me, and I saw, got to see what you had to say about it. Uh, and then, more importantly, it's the reaction to it when our fans, or I don't know if they're fans, or there's people that are on Twitter that chime in, um, and want, I mean, a lot of people seem like they just want to get into a fight or they want to be argumentative. Um, but that's how I, uh, that's how you and I started DMing about it and just feeling like the, the world is crazy. The, the people, these are this, it feels like the same thing when you see uh, flat earthers or vac- anti vaxxers. Yeah. 
It is this like yep. it like I can't. They do not believe anything. Uh, <sighs> everything is to be questioned. But then there's things where they're like, well, if you they, there are strains of things that they that they do accept as true. But anything that flies in the face of that is because it's it supporting some you know m mass media conglomerate uh, narrative that it's a, you know it's just a mess. It's a lot of these PizzaGate Q kind yeah. of yes, style it's like, people. Yeah, I, yes, a child did sleep in his bed for thirty days straight without the parents, but the dude didn't have a childhood. Yeah, well, there's that too. There's sort of the. Uh, Why, uh, explaining it away or like forgiving it because of the guy, and that's fair to say that that there, that his all uh, like many pedophiles come from abusive childhoods, and there's some correlation there, of course. But it certainly doesn't excuse it. But then there are people that I mean, ugh, just the full gamut of idiocy of saying, "Well, oh, remind me exactly what court he was found guilty in again." Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. Right. T Tim, I saw, yeah. last night I saw well, I was, the... Uh, I was reading. Hold on, Doug. Let me, let me get Doug's okay. thought on this. I'm sure it's it's quite uh, oh, yeah, no, go ahead, instructive. Sorry, <laughs> no, I, I watched the Flat Earth documentary. It's worth a watch because it's it's really about psychology or something. And uh -huh. there's a good, great point that the scientist guy makes is that we can't just... It's it's about the 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 reaction to the flat earthers, not the flat earthers themselves. Because you say, "Oh, you're just an idiot," and then they uh -huh. go they go further and further into right, the into right. the into the fringe. Well, there's also <clears throat> this part of this reaction to the documentary that says, "Well, it, this is it's totally one sided," and my reaction to that is, "That's fine." You know, you I think documentary. I just came from a documentary <laughs> film festival, and the the you know the the medium of documentary is. Is not is uh, is under no obligation to tell both sides of the story necessarily. It's it's a it's a filmmaker's per well, point of view. Point of view. Yeah. Now you could be Ken and Burns. We'll see, yeah. You can be Ken Burns and and try to tell a big wide narrative that does explain. You know, uh, that does kind of go even handed. Or you could a documentary could be a single camera on one guy telling his one experience of of a, of a situation. And this documentary mm -hmm. leans more in that direction. But this documentary doesn't exist in an in a in a isolation chamber, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, we've all, we're old enough to remember twenty years worth of this stuff, and you know, at some point, you know, this idea of somebody on Twitter going, "You better, you should do your research before you comment." But <laughs> I'm not fucking Magnum PI here, and I'm not. The onus <laughs> isn't on me to read through all the FBI files or the police <laughs> reports. Yeah. I can generate a, a an opinion on something based on. You know what I s generally what I see, and talking to friends and having sort of na natural intuition that has been developed through an education system and having a reasonable, <laughs> you know, um, level of understanding of the but, world. But I always say, like, what's more likely is did he actually do um, this, or is there this like? I I'm sorry, I originally oh, made the tweet I did because <laughs> I was I I was so shocked by the documentary, right? What was that? Um, and online, the debate I was seeing was all people saying that it's fake, that it's one-sided, that it's a hit job. And it was blowing my mind because I felt my heart was going out to these two survivors, these guys and their story. They laid their hearts out. Um, oh, yeah. And so I made, I made the tweet because I was like, man, I feel like some I – mean, I mean, I want to publicly support these guys. Yeah. And the response to it was – was really mind blowing. It felt like I was having a political debate, like I was well, talking that's about where, that, exactly. Donald Trump. Exactly. That's he, where it went right but away. I was like, why? And I was like, why do people? Why do people care so much about uh, this idea? Why are they so guarded of this idea? You know, it's so strange. I think people are so invested in Michael Jackson as like this um, this angel on earth. You know, you know I that think... if they're to admit that he's a child predator, that it will somehow – it somehow affects them, like that they were bamboozled right. by this guy yeah. they can't believe. Well, I, I think there's that side of it. There are these sort of fans of Michael Jackson that, that see him as some kind of god or this infallible human that – uh, I don't ever, never understood. I never understood the the like the the, the love. I mean, sure, there's some catchy yeah. tunes, but I mean, whatever. Like, yeah. it's just, it was all. It was it always kind of weird. But um, 
then I, but I think yeah. more in the case of you and me, there are people who, who fucking like, uh, uh, oh, sorry. A friend of mine just wrote me, uh, uh, he, he was uh, li he was listening to my story and he had something to do with the story. I want to make sure. Uh, oh, good. He was all good. He was all good with it. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, others, Jacks. There's other Jacksons we can listen to. We can get in the Jermaine, Jermaine Jackson's Tito. Uh, we can get in the wait, Jermaine's uh, discography. No, I was I was um, I was distracted there. My point was there's the people that love Michael Jackson and don't and are, what I've discovered a new term called Stan, the the, the Stan yeah. fan whatever. It's like the, uh, under, I will accept no criticism of the person I love. Die hard. Un Unconditional Die hard. Where, love. Yeah. Where does that come from, Stan? What oh, is that? Eminem's, Eminem's, no, like Eminem's, S? Song, like, oh. Eminem's song called Stan about oh. a crazy oh, fan. Oh, okay. Oh, so then, the, but then I think there's these sort of n pseudo alt-right uh, internet Reddit types that you have a lot of fans of and I have a lot of former fans who <laughs> who want to challenge the narrative and they want to push mm -hmm. the, the limits to uh, why are you just accepting what you're being told by the man, man? Why can't yeah. you do your own <laughs> research? And uh, you just just right. you just accept it because it was on what? TV, man. But what did they leave out of the documentary? Well, did, did do your own <laughs> research like me. I, I read a meme that was really persuasive. Yeah, they, they fucking post these memes with Grandpa Simpson holding up a sign. Like, is that supposed <laughs> yeah, to be ironic? Is this supposed to be ironic that that, gr that Grandpa that's Simpson that's is the reason. one holding it up? Because that because he's like a ranting <laughs> no. old lunatic on that show. <laughs> I, that, I'm genuinely that curious. Is that is that is that, <laughs> is that the way it's supposed <laughs> to be perceived? Because if you have like a ranting no, old yeah. lunatic holding a sign up, then I should not take whatever's on that sign to be <laughs> any kind of uh, you know validating well, opinion. That's uh, a, that's a great observation, and I don't think they've thought about it that way. No. Um, Doug, did you want to say something? Well, I think, well, I have a theory about who's spreading these lies about Michael Jackson. Billie Jean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you hear that? Did uh, they interview her? Did you hear that, Ethan? I did. I loved okay. it. It was terrific. Why didn't you laugh? Thank you. I think, I'm wondering. <laughs> I why laughed. I'm just I kidding. Just, yeah, I laughed. <laughs> there was laughter on this end of the call. I want I, you to all you know, know that. I, and all I have to do is, you know this, this is the ever never ending conversation we all have is all you have to do is turn off that Twitter machine and your life goes back to normal and you, your blood pressure goes yeah, down. I know. And, but <laughs> it, I, I found, true. I found the, uh, the, the kind of, um, the, the best version of this insanity when I was kind of giving Joe Rogan some shit because he had on Alex Jones and I made this simple little stupid joke, which was like, you can, if he amuses you, you can have him on, just turn his mic off, you know? Like, cause it seems like Joe Rogan right. is amused by the presence of Alex Jones. Cause he's basically like a, right. a wrestling, you know, he's like a, he's like a world wrestling <laughs> foundation character, world wrestling <laughs> foundation. Yeah. Federation. <laughs> but anyways, the, I got a mountain of people who are just like, I'm, I'm anti free speech and I, I want to, you know, take away people's oh, yeah. rights and all this nuts, nutty stuff. But then, you know, somebody said, well, Alex Jones is clearly a racist. And I, and they said, you know, what evidence do you have of that? And there was a quote from that show he was on which said that Native Americans are genetically predisposed to groupthink. So that's racism, bing, done, <laughs> period. You know, and I put that in, and somebody responded to that, disprove that. <laughs> disprove that, that Native yeah, Americans. It's yeah. like, fuck you, I don't have to do, like, what are you talking? Yeah. Disprove no, it that, the, and it the, never ends. And it's like these... The, the burden of proof <laughs> we'll, we'll go back to the beginning of life itself. Yeah, You'll exactly. have to prove why the Big Bang happened to prove any point yeah, on Twitter. And, and uh, I just hope these people get well and and get healthy because it's uh, doesn't. It's I mean, and the same goes for me and you. We should all just. But uh, please, if you oh, haven't man. seen the documentary, it's very affecting and very. Uh, um, yes, yeah, yeah, horrif it it's is. horrifying. And they're totally credible, uh, despite having. And he goes, "Yeah, but these these guys lied in the past." And uh, John Levinstein on Twitter <laughs> it was just like that. That's you know, what that people kept telling me that on Twitter. It's like that's the whole. That's the whole idea. Of the documentary that they they lied yeah. about it, it for like, years, oh, clearly. and now they're telling the truth. And, and why? And John Levinstein on Twitter said, "You know, somebody <laughs> put it. You know, someone uh, he had said something about it, and he wrote, she uh, somebody wrote. Well, either they were lying." to the court 
or they're lying now, you know, and um, and he was just yeah. like, well, Whoa. they were lying. They were lying to the court. End of conversation. They were lying because Michael Jackson threatened yeah. them yeah. to go to the jail. They explain that in the documentary if you watch it. Yeah, and then it's there's truly. The, and I like Mike, when they cherry pick out like, but he said he was at the Grammys in 1986 in New York, but they were held in Los Angeles. Bingo, you know, you're like he was seven or something. His whole timeline is off. It, it's like, how do you remember anything from when you're eight or nine years old, let alone like the specific details of shit and like. It's crazy how much they do remember, um, but and and I'm sure that it was something to do with therapy and stuff. But sorry, go ahead, Ethan. (laughs) I'm surprised that people are so eager to protect what who may be the most prolific child predator that has ever lived. But he's the king. I mean, this is a man who he's the king of popping little boy cherries. What's the, Doug, what's the pun for pop that deals with child molestation? I was thinking about that earlier, but then, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, uh, um, all right. The king of, uh, well, I don't. And, yeah. and, and as yeah. I always say, I am no expert. I do not know. I, I, do, I do not have all the answers. I do not. Uh, but, I mean, this is what we do in life is we say what we, we, we go with our sort of feelings and our gut and and oftentimes that's fairly well informed. And I always think like people are sending me some YouTube link to some fucking documentary that that ex- that you know calls out this is a hoax or something. And when you look at what HBO has to do to put that on the air, the legal clearance, the legal uh, hours and hours of work that goes into, they're putting a lot of uh, a lot a lot of risk by putting that on the air. Because there's a, a, a lot of information to go through and a lot of as, uh, aspersions. Is that a word? Absolutely. A lot of uh, accus- accu- accusations mm. that they got to yeah. be pretty tied up to be like, okay, we're put. Are you sure you're, we're putting this on on the air? Okay, uh, so yep, I'm signing. I'm signing point. here. So they're going to bring a lawsuit. So I think this will hap- This will not go away. The Jackson family is suing, and there'll be there'll be. I assume there'll be a discovery process, and there'll be this will all come out. Yeah. Still, this isn't going away. Absolutely. So, and, only, and oh, one thing before I leave that I want to say about the movie: for all the shit you see about people talking about it on IMDb, everyone is brigading it. It's at like five out of ten. I want to say for the record that on Rotten Tomato, among the critics, at that ninety-seven percent, yeah. and among top critics. Credits, it's at a hundred percent. Well, you but know what I think about, about critics, critics. But <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started well, about tomatoes uh, and how uh, that's people <laughs> who you know spend their time, their credibility have endorsed this movie as credible. So right. don't yes. listen to the, the yeah. peanut gallery. The peanut you know gallery is saying? exactly is that. Yeah, I agree. All right, yeah. thanks, Ethan. I'm glad we worked this well, out to you uh, have you on. I love you all. I love, love you, you Tim, Vic, uh, Doug. You guys are geniuses, national treasures, and I'd love to have all three of you on our podcast. And any time that would work out, you guys are treasures. Thank you. God right. bless. Yes. God bless America. All, God bless to you. Um, all right. Yeah. Listen, baby. Listen. Let's take another call. <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. It was nice to have him on the show. Who there, baby? I, 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 would, I mean, do, I, do, we want a, do we want a Michael Jackson innocent person to call in? I'm just asking. If, if you just don't care. Do you, uh, yeah. I, is my mind open to that? Let's hear both sides. Let's hear both sides. All sides, Tim. Yeah. I want to hear I know. all sides. I didn't see the doc. I have no dog in the race. This, this, other, uh, yeah. this other idea of this documentary was one-sided, Hello? man. This was a one-sided documentary. <laughs> uh, what, you know, why couldn't they have shown... Go- it's un- they're under no obligation to show any... They should show whatever sides they want. But it was so, it was like, it, it wasn't heavy handed or anything. They just sat back and kind of let them tell the story. And it's, I don't know how you can come if to If I'm going to watch the, well, did they interview any children that, that weren't molested yeah. by Michael Jackson? Well, that's the thing, Doug, is like Corey Feldman and, and all these people, Macaulay, come out and say, well, I wasn't molested. Yeah. So how could this guy be a molester? A, he had a serious pattern. Of the, like he had best friends. There were kids. And when, when they, they had to go away, he brought in a new one and replaced Feldman them. was a beard. He was a, yeah. he was like a uh, distraction or sort of like, well, Feldman like, didn't, has his own yeah, documentary didn't, coming a, out. Yeah, didn't Feldman nut. say it happened or? No, or, no, he oh. he had he 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 was a victim oh, of of that stuff Who did by he, other people. He accused someone else, like right? Didn't he? Uh, I don't really know the details, but I know he. Yeah, is. but he does have a documentary coming out. So. Yeah, 
All right, let's um, take have, another call. I think I have a Feldman. Uh, Hello. It's going well, isn't it? Hello, darling. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. Ooh, he sounds nice. Where are you calling from, love? Yeah. I'm calling from the UK. Oh, Nottingham. yeah. How's it going? What's your name, bloke? All right, all right. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. What's your name? <laughs> Steve. Hello, Steve. How you doing? I've had a penis reduction. <laughs> hey, Steve. How you doing, I'm mate? Hey, what's up, Steve? Hey, man. How you call are you calling from London? I just uh, want to take issue with something uh, Ethan said. Yeah, all right. He so said, since he's uh, here to defend himself. <laughs> well, <laughs> he said Michael he Jackson's is the most wrong? prolific uh, <laughs> se sex offender. Yeah, who you got? Um, of the 20th century. That prize actually goes to... Oh, sorry, I muted you. Were you saying what I thought you were saying? The uh, What's his name? Ethan. No, oh, yeah, sorry. Who, who yeah, does the so prize go to? Uh, the prize goes to Sir Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile, yeah, mm. one of my great friends. <laughs> Hello, this is Rock and Roll Gary on the line. <laughs> How you doing? Hello. Our new, him, our new Savile, yeah, the little dirty bastard. Yeah. <laughs> he had a good time, you know, that was his old uh. thing. He used to go to the morgue. <laughs> and you know what goes on there is quite uh, well. Listen, man, you know it's his own private business what he does in a morgue. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, Jimmy Savile. If people don't know, is truly hell on earth. The devil walks amongst us, type, right? Yeah, yeah. He was friends with Prince Charles, <laughs> well, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he was knighted. Yeah. He was he knighted, yeah. really? Yeah, he was a sir? Yeah, oh, yeah, Sir Jimmy Savile, yeah. yeah. But wow. Did they strip yeah. his knight? They gave him a day. <laughs> you are now a day. <laughs> or is he knighted, you know, is it like unrevocable? The knighting. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I think they, they'll dig him up, maybe. And oh, he's, yeah. he's dead. Well, yeah. at least Michael Jackson had some songs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Savile, what did he do? Savile was like a radio presenter. He's kind of like a Dick Clark, yeah, TV, right? He, he, TV he or TV. Uh, and he used to do all these charities. He was like a rock and roll. Like um, Dick Clark is probably the closest, but he was a little more like kind of a little 70s and 80s, kind of a little wilder, right? He was kind of had this wild attitude. Um, rock and roll Gary is kind of based on Jimmy Savile in, in, in all seriousness. <laughs> uh, Jimmy yeah. Savile meets Keith Richards. And... Um, it's, it's a sick, sick guy who used to like go into hospitals and molest kids because he would get into hospitals because he ran charities right. and like, you know, so he'd use these charities to like sneak these like disabled kids into some fuck, fuck, uh, vans. And it was, he was rotten to the core. Jackson did that too, right? He, he had that, uh, kid that had cancer and he was like a make a wish kind of thing. Yeah. And he was paying for his bills and. Oh boy. This is a. It's a dark uh, day. <laughs> Death Jesus. and molestation. Anyways, Hello. thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, yeah, good, no problem. <laughs> also, I was going to, um, you already mentioned it, Alan Partridge. Did you yeah. see it? Oh, I saw the first two, man. It's so good. Yeah. He's back in top form. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank That's you. All, all the best. All the best. Love you, you much. Love you, love oh, you, love you. <laughs> Let's take another call. <laughs> Let's take a call. Um, I'll have what she's having. 10 08. <laughs> 20 up! more minutes. 20 more minutes in the oh. show today. Sorry about really all the bummer stuff. You, you know Sorry all about the bummer stuff. Maybe we'll yeah, take a call yeah. that will really turn us on. I could get back into. No, Tim. Soggy pants. <clears throat> Hello? No. Hey! I don't know what's real and what's. <laughs> is, it, is this a call? <laughs> I can't hear you. Hello? I can't hear you. Okay, hello. We have somebody yeah, on the line. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Go. Can you yeah. turn off? Can you, is, can you turn off? Uh, there's a. There's a. The news. Your stream is going on, baby. Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm screen calling. How do I turn that crap off? Get ready to dump this guy. What do you want? Yo, so my <laughs> HBO is not working, man. I can't watch the documentary. I've been trying it last <laughs> night. <laughs> What's wrong with your HBO, baby? You pay your bills? <laughs> I'm paying the bills, man. I'm actually, you know, using, uh, you know, another account, but the HBO, I got that Samsung Smart TV. Oh, you got to sign in. And it's not delivering. All right, not so smart. Where are you calling in from? Canada? Uh, uh, shit. Near Buffalo? Oh, New man. York? That's pretty close to Canada. 
Oh, yeah, no doubt. I could swim across the lake right now, and I'd be there. Great. Um, let yeah. me ask you this. What do you do sure. for a living? How does a guy like you, with this kind of energy, pay the bills? This kind of energy, pay the bills? Well, uh, you, are you know, in... I, I do a lot of different kinds of work, you know. I'm in a light of mysterious That's work. Great. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> All right, next caller. Hey, Tim, what's going on, man? Hey, welcome to Cable Issues. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker. <laughs> Call in with your issues with streaming cable. Time Warner is now Spectrum. How can I help you? Table. Thank you, yeah. Well, my HBO is working just fine, but... Uh, man, I, I just wanted to, well, first of all, I want to say, man, that sucks so bad. Uh, that story you were telling me or that you were telling everyone earlier about, uh, you know, that, that, that night that y'all were driving over to the, you know, that get together. That's, just when we awful. forget about it. Just when we get about, oh, I know. I know. Yeah, bring it back. I know. Sorry. Just when I thought I was out, you dragged me back in. <laughs> well, I, I th sorry. I, I'm pretty much like. Uh, I guess I'm gonna be the one caller that actually like talks about the on cinema special. Man, this the the past special the was floor like is yours. <laughs> it was the fucking best shit ever, man. It was the you funniest suck. fucking thing I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, I don't really know what <laughs> what else really to say about it, but uh, I guess like I had a couple questions about it. Where did y'all find uh, the dude that played? Um, or uh, Rafi, Raphael. Next question. Just <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you have to like do anything uh, to get clearance to make like you know hypothetical threats that like hell will rain down on the Oscars <laughs> that like like people are gonna have their heads blown off? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, we, so much to we got no permission uh, from anybody. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I never thought so, about yeah. it. It's all just free speech. It's all pretend. Yeah. yeah. It didn't. I mean, it didn't it's happen. Just, it's not based on any. I mean, any it's satire. It's satire of right. actual. Uh, yeah, yeah. Conspiracy. Just, yeah. Anyways, yeah. thank you for watching, and also thank. Uh, I just want to shout out to the crew of the Oscar special who works very hard, um, and they sent basically Eric Natornicola and Andrew Porter, uh, the director producer team of that, worked very hard to get to us get to that Sunday, and then immediately began working and prepping and continuing to work on <laughs> yeah what about the, the jenny, jenny lewis, lewis special we the, didn't talk about that yet they worked right into the next day starting up on the jenny lewis special which just a brief background on that i was uh approached a couple months ago by her manager saying hey jenny wants you to help her make a music video i said no thank you um she said, we said well she wants to do like a telethon something really different and then immediately I got stressed and paranoid and, and anxiety ridden about it because it's like, ah, oh, man, I already know there's going to be no money for this to actually do it in, in any kind of way. I'm not, I don't want to take this on. It seems really hard. But I do like her. And, and so I said, well, come on in to the office and we can, I can at least give you some thoughts about it and just kind of talk to you through like what it would require, what my thoughts on how to make it good would be. So she came in. She happened to be in the office with e Eric Natornicola and Andrew Porter were both here. I said, er I went out and I said, Eric, do you like uh, Jenny Lewis? And he's like, I'm a huge fan, okay? That's what he said to me. He says, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I know all her stuff. I said, do you want to direct this thing next? You know, we didn't know when we were going to do it, but do you want to direct this thing? Absolutely not. And he says, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then same with Andrew. So that I said, I said, well, come on in. Let's talk. So she came. we came in. We started <laughs> talking. Everyone got along great. We said... What are we going to do? How can we do it? How much money is there? Why are we doing it? What's it for? Started out as a 12-hour telethon, I said, and I wanted to do that. I said, well, if we're going to do this, let's go like Jerry Lewis, Jerry Lewis style. Let's go big. It's a long time. And then when the realities of it sort of sat in and said, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it for three hours. That's all we can afford. 
And so we made some calls, and we got people involved. Jeff Goldblum stole the show. Everybody that came in, Beck, I was hanging out with Beck. Yeah, I'm a huge fan Jim of Jim James. What's he Jim, like? Jim What's James was a was I mean, you, a, all, you all, that that rotating bass uh, wasn't that great. Guys, <laughs> yeah. That was so funny. Dude. It was so great. Everybody was so happy to be there. Jason Schwartzman is like the the most genuine and nice guy <clears throat> that that you can imagine. He we, he. Everybody was there early, stayed till the very end. And we had so much fun. It was a bit of a mess. Of course, there were some tech problems. We prob we didn't, you know, as always, you don't have you don't have exactly the amount of money you need, and you don't have exactly the amount of time you need to do it the right to do it the way you would see it on big TV or something. But some people like that. I think there's an element of that is is uh, that is genuinely frustrating for us, and we wished it worked a little better. So if we had like another week to prepare some different equipment, I think maybe it would have been tighter, but we also liked the mess of it. I happen to have been at this film festival that weekend uh, from Thursday to Sunday, woke up Sunday morning to a snowstorm in Columbia, Missouri, two out, two or Breaking like four, four or five <laughs> inches of snow coming down, drive from Columbia, somebody drove me from Columbia up to Kansas City, okay? So miraculously, there's cars on the side of the road, ladies and gentlemen. Cars that have spun out and are in ditches. We're passing them. We are passing the cars, ladies and gentlemen. And time is is ticking by. My flight at 2 p.m. Oh, come on, let's go. It's 10.30 when I leave, ladies and gentlemen. I am racing, racing up across the 70, 70 east, or 70, 70, east, 70 west from Columbia, Missouri, all the way to Kansas City Airport. I get there in plenty of time. The flight is on time. <laughs> but there was many people concerned that I was not going to be able to fly out. That I was going to get stuck there because of the snow. <clears throat> I land, get the music back. I land at LAX Airport. I do not check a bag. I have a bag that I brought on with me. I race, race out. My car is waiting for me. I am transported directly to the Jenny Lewis Telethon site, the studio broadcast west in Culver City. I arrive one hour before we go live. I put on my salmon suit. And the show begins! Oh, oh my goodness. Too, man. What an exciting story. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you caught a story. plane and came here. <laughs> <laughs> you got there in time. All right. Well, thanks for the compliments on the Oscar special. And are they going to be clipping out the uh, Jenny Lewis? Uh, I stuff? hope so. They have it. They're supposed to be doing that. That's that's in the works. Apparently, I, I hope hey, so too. More, sorry, just one more quick question. Do you have anything? Uh, I, I mean, you haven't been on anything on uh, the Earwolf podcast network in a little while. Do you have anything in the pipeline uh, coming up at any time? I do my own shit, man. I don't need to go on anybody else's show. I do things <laughs> no, occasionally. I know, I know. You know what I mean? Like I mean, I think show. I'm doing a show on there uh, soon. Oh, uh, soon, man. Uh, yeah, good time. One <laughs> of those things. I don't, ca I don't really care to do it, man. I got too much going on in my own life. I got you. I'm going to go on right, some thanks. fucking podcast and give away free content. No, thanks. <laughs> I'll do it here on Office Hours. I don't hours. care. Just All right, man. Well, thanks. How about pay me? I'll come on. Pay me. I'll go fucking I don't do your care. podcast. And don't give me no free what? swag either. Some tote bag. From now on, I just don't care. Um, oh, hell no. Someone listening right now on the chat says, "You have a podcast, Tim?" I said, yeah, you're listening to it. It's <laughs> Office Hours. Look it up. Number one podcast in America. Just beat Joe Rogan. Um, hell no. One more. Let's take a couple more calls. We have 12 minutes left on the show. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. Who there? Who that? Anybody home? Hello. Hey, Tim. Hey, who's this? Where are you calling from? This is Luke Booth from East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I knew Luke. I don't. Who are you? That's my, old, that's my old stomping grounds. Yeah, yeah. Um... I wanted to tell uh, Doug that that sample of the dude uh, saying, uh, what was it? Uh, I'm a pretty simple guy is Chris Conley from Saves the Day, that uh, old 90s band. Really? Oh. Yeah. So. Mystery I'm solved. Like a pretty simple guy. <laughs> Mystery <laughs> solved. How did you, how did, how do you know that? Dude, you played it, um, I want to say like three weeks ago, like right in the beginning of, a, of uh, one of the podcasts and immediately... I was like, holy shite, that is 
Chris Conley. Chris Connolly. Huh. Chris Conley, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm like a also, pretty uh, simple guy. for Tim. Yeah, what's up, uh, bud? So what were you doing with Nathan, uh, and is there anything in the works with you guys? Well, Nathan and I were both at the True Falls Film Festival in Missouri, uh, Columbia, Missouri, which is a festival, a documentary film festival. Nathan was oh. there showing Finding Francis. If you haven't seen Finding Francis, it's an unbelievable, oh, unbelievable piece of work. Finding Francis screened in True. front of 2,000 people at this beautiful old theater, and the, it, w- it killed. It, was, it, was, it killed. It's all I can say. It destroyed. Everyone loved it, laughed all the right places, True. were as emotional, uh, moved, emotionally moved by it. I was very proud of him and Clark and, and the whole team. Uh, alter, alter, I was there because I was asked to give a okay. little presentation, a little speech, a little interview, which I did with uh, Nick Pinkerton, a well-known, respected writer. So we talked about uh, mostly about on cinema and talked about uh, some new things coming up that was very exclusive. People in that audience have some okay. real scoops on their hand that I am <laughs> not I just it was not a filmed thing it was a uh, it was private for them it was a couple hundred people and we just uh, we showed some stuff that you will soon see that I can't wait I can't I'm, I'm it's driving me nuts not to talk about it I'm but shaking thinking about it anyways um, that's what we're doing and and we had so much fun we, we and so early uh, in the weekend together i started doing this gag where i was taking selfies of us and he <laughs> genuinely doesn't like that but also realizes it's funny to be to, for this sort of shtick sh- to go on through the weekend um i don't have any plans to do anything with him but uh i we do have a good time together and we like we make each other laugh i would love to do yeah, something with him. I, I could see some genuine anger in uh, those selfies yes <laughs> um, there was a funny I was also filming him on video a lot because I was like well maybe I should make a documentary about me filming him, <laughs> uh, me being friends with him and so we're filming all this stuff and somebody tweeted like because I had my camera right in his face and somebody tweeted it out like I just saw Nathan Fielder being harassed by this guy on the street <laughs> I was really surprised and impressed his lo- like his recognition level is like, he was like a beetle walking around this college town everybody loves Nathan, for you. You should do a documentary called Friending, Nobody. Friending Nathan. Well, <laughs> I had a good. We it could be good better than Finding Francis. Friending Nathan is good. I also thought Fest Friends was pretty good. Fest Friends. <laughs> but I like if your you're idea. Waiting better. for a hug. You might want to pack a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, I, I, I generally. Uh, you know, I like funny people. I like. I mean, why? Do, why do you want to stand around and have dinner with some bore? You want to. T- you want to. You want to hang out with people that like can entertain you. I demand it. Demand <laughs> entertainment from people, at all times. I want to laugh and smile. I want to be clown. I want to be entertained by a clowns. <laughs> and bits. It's funny because it's true. I want oh. bits and characters and voices. And I'm doing voices to when we're having breakfast at eight in the morning. I don't got that. You're gonna eat those eggs. And I'm just always amped. I'm always moving around. And I'm having such fun. And I'm looking for friends who can... Wait, keep... It cuts short. Well, here. Oh, we gotta, here we go. What? Yes, I'm having such fun. And I'm looking for friends who can make me laugh. Make me smile. Can you make me laugh? <laughs> yes. Well, I like having fun. Yes, I like having fun. Yes, I like to be friends. <laughs> Oh, I like to have fun. I like having laughs. I like to see people who can make me smile. And they do all their voice. Oh, it's so, it's so hard. I'm losing it. Oh, I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like meeting friends who can make me smile. I like doing bits. I like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> That is so annoying. Oh, I like having fun. I like doing bits. I like doing voices like a rock and roll carry. I like to have fun. Yes, I like to have fun. I like having fun. I like having fun. 
I like it to laugh. Yes, I like it to laugh. I want you to laugh. I like you to laugh. Doug, is this um, <laughs> yes. is this uh, library music? Or is that it something we can't use? It just says funny kids music, so it must be library. I've used that in something before. Uh, library music. Yeah. Yeah. library. I like having a laugh. I like having a laugh. It uh, needs a little work, but that's going to be a hit. <laughs> we got to put on an office hours record with all these weird songs we make on this show. Um, Dude, you got a collection. I know. Somebody should start making notes from all the shows, like what are the little songs, and then we'll take them and really flesh them out. How about this? I'll that play. Goes, I'll play it, so and we like all we all be fun. quiet. We all be quiet, mm. and some listener can take the track. Oh, there's that guy who that does that really well. Yeah. Let that guy take the track from this 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 clip and loop this it. This clip. And, Ready? Uh, okay. Everyone, be quiet. Shh. Where it's, that's where it stops. Okay, so then I should do my ISO track now. Okay, there you go. I like having fun. <laughs> I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. I like having fun. Yes, I like to laugh. I like having fun to meet people who laugh. Can I put a few, like, you know, ad-lib hip-hop things in the back? Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Sounds good. I like to laugh too. Put okay. those in. Well, you don't have to use those if you. Those are options. Yeah, options. Yeah, you could. Get, some, get some clown noise. Some <laughs> Wait, how about if we all go? Yeah. You know, together. Uh -huh. Three, two, one. Yeah. yeah. I like having fun. Fun, fun. Yeah. I like. You know what I mean? I like. Be, I'm gonna do like, like that. You know. Hold on. I mean? I'm not gonna do. I'm just gonna do lines separated so they're not in. That, that he can put them in beats. Stems. So, yeah. I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like people who make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that should be enough to work with. You want to do, do the harmonies? harmonies? Mm -hmm. By the way, uh -huh. you have to put me in there. I it's like mandatory. to laugh. All right, I let's like take one laugh. more call and then we'll say goodbye. <laughs> one more call, please. Let's one take one another more call. Come say come goodbye. On, we'll say <laughs> goodbye. All right, is there anybody on the line? Hello. 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 Hey, guys. Hey, where are you calling from? Is this Phil? This Hello? is Phil. How are you guys? Oh, there we hey, go. Phil, Phil on the mend. Phil, Phil on the mend. What you got Phil. for us today, Phil? Phil, uh, I got a little case of baseball fever today. Ooh, Ooh. spring training back in session. Ooh. Got some inflammation. Um, you know the Phillies are uh, some inflammation. <laughs> um, Phillies are got the Bryce Harper now. Phil, as a not to be too critical of you, because I know you're on the mend and you're a sick <laughs> old man now. Um, in your opinion, ending the show on a call of talking baseball, smart move for me, or, or uh, what do you think? I, I've got a well, I've got a good um, story I'd like for you to tell. I think I think you might like to tell this story, but okay. you know, I've had my my own baseball experience where I got into the Braves game those so many years ago, yes. where I sort of snuck in and got in through the media and so forth, and you told a little bit of a story about uh, your time with Brody Stevens where he took you to a Dodger game. Yes. And I think I think he got you he got you to meet some players or some something like yes. that. Yes. Um let's end on the Brody um today. We I do thank Brody. Uh he he's a big baseball freak. He used to go to all the Dodgers games and then he switched allegiances to the Cubs. Do you yeah, know what that was that's a, what's up. Do you know what that's about, Doug? Like, did, I think his pal was like, um, one of the coaches over yeah. there. Yeah. So, but, he, but at the time he was really in tight with the pitchers at the Dodgers and the Phillies were in town and he knew I was a Philadelphia boy who loved the Phillies. And, uh, so he's like, I got you tickets to the game and we're going to go, we're going to go down for batting practice and we're going to meet all the players and, and that's what he did. He got me in, and um, we, we hung around. And, and I remember being uh, really uh, affected by meeting, ba meeting baseball players. I've never really met any pro, pro sports people before. And baseball, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a time, it was like, t it was a, toward the end of a, of a certain era of Phillies players, which was like, uh, I forget everybody's name, but Jimmy Rollins. And um, who was the big guy on that team? John uh, Cruck. Not, no, no. This is way after John Brian Cruck. Howard or yeah, Brian, uh, Ryan Howard. 
It, Rollins and Howard were like the stars of the team. And I meet these guys, and you realize these guys are way younger than you. So you're kind of, you know, I always have this thing like meeting any professional athlete that they're older than me. <laughs> like in terms of just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because when you're a kid, you watch these people, and they're, they're what adults are. They're one version of adults. So whenever you meet them, you're like, I don't know. I don't feel, I feel younger than you. I feel like a kid, I guess, when I'm around you. Hi, Dad. And, and um, anyways, these were major uh, ball players, but they're also like in the middle of the season, uh, on the road, and you got the sense of like, this is a weird job they have. And they're kind of like, they were very friendly and nice, and we had a, little, a couple of laughs. And uh, but you could tell there was just like, yeah, we're just gonna play a game tonight, you know, like this isn't that big a deal, and let's just get on to the next game. And um, you could sense the sense of like being uh, playing ball, uh, being kind of a can be kind of probably a drag or just a, a long year of your life, you know, just um, yeah, what are you gonna do tonight? I don't know, we're gonna play a game and then you know, probably go out to dinner, just like when we're on the road, Doug, and it feels kind of like mostly stand around out in the field, yeah, and spit. Are they always spitting and <laughs> chewing and spitting? They're like, ting. They don't, I don't know. Don't. I don't know about that. But anyways, I appreciate, always appreciate it, and, and uh, thank Brody for giving me that experience. Um, now, how did you get on the field? Because not just a regular ticket will get you on the field. No, this I, we had bat, we had whatever some kind of uh, uh, on the field access that he get, that he got, and he knew the co he knew everybody. He knew all the coaches. They all knew. I mean, he was like. He was a little bit of comic relief for them, you know, because he, he was such a character and he was so funny. They loved having him around. And, I mean, the, the yeah. statement from the Cubs manager was when he died was huge. It was like, we, you know, they treated him like a member of the team. And they did because he was so funny. To be, he had such great energy to be around. He was so, you know, he just made you smile. He made you laugh. Um, and it was always coming from a good place. Um, he brought them to the World Series, and, and he broke the curse yes! of the billy goat. Yep. So. Single-handedly. Well, that's a great story, <laughs> and I uh, appreciate you telling that. Uh, he was a Thank great, you. He was a great comic. Thanks, and, Phil. How, uh, how are you feeling? You getting back to normal? Phil? I'm doing okay. Um, doing, doing fine so far. Just uh, get, you know, occasional feelings of grogginess, which I guess is to be expected, considering what happened and everything. And... Uh, you know, I was telling Vic that I, I tend to deal with a little bit of paranoia yeah, somewhat. Sure. Well, Post-traumatic post stress, post yeah. stress right, kind of stress. thing. It's going to happen again. Yeah. <clears throat> I got to... It was not great, but uh, oh well, what are you going to do? Um, let me ask you some question. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this. I'm, I'm going to the premiere of uh, Us this weekend in, at South by Southwest. And... Yeah. I am not sure what to wear. So I think what I'm going to do is it doesn't, from what I've seen, it doesn't look like it's a big hoity-toity premiere with like suits and everything. It's South by Southwest. It's kind of cool, man. It's people are chill. And thinking about wearing jeans and a black sort of blazer and... A Western shirt, like I have a black Western jeans or what no, color? Tim, these just jeans look here. better than hey! look better than everyone else. Dress up, go no, crazy. Denim Listen, good. I have a rhinestone. Cowboy. I have a rhinestoney kind of shirt. <laughs> yeah. I have like a shirt with like a like pattern on it. Yeah, with like the the, the uh, nudie suit kind of style. Kind of like, nudie yeah. suit, but it's black. It's got like a, a turquoise and an orange mm -hmm. kind of design on it. I look pretty good in it. I like black because it does kind of hides your mm -hmm. belly a little bit. It kind of obfuscate, ob, obfuscates um, angles a little yeah. bit. It's a little bit of a move. It's a little bit of a choice. Yeah. But the thing is, I'm, I'm going to get photographed a lot on the red carpet. And those red carpet photos always look like shit. They're always flash yeah. and they're just, you know, bad. What are they going to do? Turn you away? Though? You know, oh, like, no, no, no. I'm not saying that. No, no. I'm not saying that, Vic. But, I'm, not, no. I'm just saying do. It is a choice. I, I went to uh, Eric's uh, steak thing, whatever yeah. that's called. Yeah. Uh, Beef steak. And yeah. And Dan Harmon was there. Yeah. Didn't dress up at all. No. Just he, he looked like he rolled a slob. off the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could His shirt. I mean, I could wear this sweatshirt. It would be yeah. like it's all any anybody could do whatever they want. But I kind of like this Western shirt, but it's a little bit of like a character move. You know, it's like a character choice. But I do like it. It feels good to wear. And I it's just like but is it a, is it a little like corny to go to Austin and wear like a Western <laughs> shirt? 
Just right. go for well, it. You should you should wear a gun. You should carry a gun. <laughs> Like a six they're shooter. They're not going to let me Spurs. in there, Doug. Yeah. Be realistic. They're not going to let me in. Are so here's my question. Did you say you're going to do a hat? No like hat. A, no hat. No cowboy hat? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to do that, yeah, do it. Gotta no, but then, then I'm doing a character. Do a, <laughs> who cares? Do it. People there's, love my salmon like shirt a, on the yeah. Jenny. I mean, Why don't you wear Jenny? a... Uh, <laughs> Tim, I know what you could do. Wear like a Lone Ranger mask. <laughs> then they <laughs> cut down on the flashes and uh, stuff. Yeah, the salmon jacket was nice. I mean... The salmon jacket was nice, but... What about that over top the shirt? That would be That's, weird. Okay. That would be weird. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to ask the audience. I, it's hard to say because I would love to show a picture of this shirt, but I don't have one with me. You can give you an idea. A very, what do you think, there's Phil? A very, there's a very fine line between hee haw and uh, classically western, but uh, I think what you've got going on is pretty good. Yeah. And you could, you could ask, uh, you know, Martha Kelly lived in Austin for a while. She could give you some tips on what's mm. uh, appropriate. Uh, okay, from Baskets. I saw her the other night. Um, I, if, I feel like someone says I should just be myself. And if this makes me feel good mm -hmm. uh, and I like the way I look in it, I should just go for it. What about a bolo tie? I do like wearing a. I wore a bolo tie that, to an to event. To me, the that other looks night. a little clownish to me, I think. You, but I, I think. felt good in the bolo tie. I think it, it I feels think like it you're making it fun, of the, fun of those people. But it's a practical thing. Yeah, you like it? Uh, yeah, Aristotle I like it. it. It's, there, it's like a, it, it ties what things it, together. What does it do? Actually? Well, I've never it, 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 what, what happens, Vic, you and I have big bellies. <laughs> it's an easier tie to tie. It creates a, it creates a line in the, in the middle oh, of your shirt. So like that a tie. It's, it, like, it's a tie. Yeah. You don't look at the belly. You look, your eyes go a little up yeah, on like, the chest where there's no gut. Like, oh, he has a bolo tie. I'm just going to. Look Tim, why don't you wear like a Brett Michaels kind of headband? You know? <laughs> a headband with the cowboy yeah, hat on top of it. Some of your hair. Can I know. Talk. I could so easily start dressing like Dakar, <laughs> like on cinema. Tim Heidecker. It's not that big of a stretch. Right. Uh, the whole thing is stressful. Shoes. And then I got to pack shoes all this. Shoes are stuff. important, though. I think. No, they aren't, because no one but ever looks at your shoes. They do if it's a bright. Like you have those green shoes. Like those. Like those are cool. I don't know. Like you could do that yeah. with your black outfit. I'll just wear these boots. Definitely don't talk to us about what to <laughs> yeah, wear. Yeah, yeah. Look what I'm wearing. I'm wearing like a weird windbreaker. Like I have no fashion sense at all. Yeah, but you make. That's you, kind of a cool windbreaker. You works. guys are. You guys like all look great. It's a good <laughs> color. <laughs> See, Holds the heat in. All right, it's stressful. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, while we have Phil on, like, everyone should check out Phil's article that he wrote about the uh, the baseball article. Oh yeah, that's. Um, Can we? Yeah. Is that uh, pinned still at the top of your Twitter <clears throat> feed, Phil? Well, yeah, I unfortunately replaced that with the pin stroke. Uh, <laughs> stroke <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no. Well, you'll well check out both that stories. That what's your, what's your Twitter again, Phil? Uh, at play as ball. <laughs> what's this? at what? P-L-A-Y-A-Z-B-A-L-L. -L. Or if you just type in Phil Braun. Search. I don't know. Oh, uh, I don't think that's it. All right. I, I got to end the show. It's 1037. I could go all day, but we've been on for too long. It's a too long. And we love you, Phil. Stay, uh, stay, stay healthy, healthy, buddy. Thanks, guys. All right. I guess that's our show. Thanks for listening. <laughs> listening. We yeah, got some good, good times, huh? We got some good beats out of this show. We got some good moments. Kind of good to no, be back. No tech issues. Uh, no major I tech know, issues. I know. Knock on wood. This worked. Dot, 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 All right, guys. Um, <laughs> I guess, uh, Aristotle, are you ending the show? Oh, I got to play some music to Get end around. the show so you have a nice drop. All right. Oh, Thank you on. for listening well, on, to our go. show. No, we like you yeah, listening. Time, we like your calls. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. See you next week, maybe, huh? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Get him out of here.